There's not a lot of girls doing that these days. Can I ask what you're saving for? You want to buy a house so you can never be kicked out. you're good to get started okay. uh hello hello ladies first uh i love i love the film um what what really uh stands out to me um let's say is that that you've made this 50 percent um bipoc commitment as a producer director before i, I, I want to know like when people get to the set that's not familiar with what's going on do they do they feel different just being on a set with so many Diverse people, do they make, they mention like, hey, it's, this set looks different to you? They're the best sets. <laughs> they get mentioned every time. To the point where I'm so sorry that this is the experience that everybody outside of our sets all the time. And, well, you know, we do a lot of commercial work and branded work and stuff like that. And so often, you know, <laughs> I don't know, but people walk onto our sets and they just feel, it's, it's a, for me, it's a safety thing. I want you to feel safe because I want to feel safe and I remember not feeling safe on sets. Um, so that, and also because the work is just better. It just is. I'm just like, it, it's a, it's a mandate for, of course it's a mandate, but it's just the reality. Like that's, it reflects my friend groups and reflects my life. So to like walk onto a set that doesn't look like that, I would be like, okay, we're missing out on something and the work's going to suffer. Yeah. I, I know that a lot of, uh, I'll say the old guard in Hollywood kind of cringe when they started making mandate. I guess all of America cringes at mandates these days, but um, be, as in COVID, I mean, do you think that we would have ever gotten to the point of having um, this type of diversity, this type of women behind the camera, if it wasn't for people like Ava DuVernay and people like, and companies like, uh, I guess, CBS and other places committing to doing, um, this BIPOC mandate? Um, yeah, yes and no. I, I do think that it's about intention. You know, there's a lot of people playing lip service. There's a lot of conversations where it's like, oh, this is a mandate because we want to check a box. Um, but then there are the companies that aren't doing that. And it's very obvious, um, especially if you're from the community. But I think for like everybody, you're just paying attention. Um, it's very obvious which ones are which. Um, Ava, of course, she's led the way. I think, you know, every woman that has stood up and said something, either like at an award show or, or with the Me Too movement, or, you know, just everybody that has said something and just been like, hey, by the way, um, what's up? You know, that, those little conversations over time, they do have, uh, they do have some type of impact. I mean, we're here. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. And, and Lorenza, um, uh, first, I want to visit Chile. I can't wait, wait till I go one day. It's the best Chile. country. You need to tell me, <laughs> and I'll tell you everything. <laughs> but I wonder, like, I, I know that that the black community made a lot of uh, headway with with the Oscar So White campaign and everything yep. else. Um, do you feel that the the Latinx Latino um, community has been loud enough and 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 demanding that they be a part of? The conversations also, and and what what am I missing it? Because I, I don't hear the conversations. Yeah, is, is you that are, uh, this is a great question, and I want to have six hours to download it with you because the Latino community and the Latinx community is very different than the Black community in many ways. In terms of representation in our industry, it's lacking massively. And interestingly enough, there's such an intersectionality of being Latino because it just in people of color in that way you have from the whitest Latino to Afro Latinos. And that whole intersection is beautiful. However, the unition of that community is very different. And I have noticed in my own experience, it's complex and there's 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 a lot of culture versus ethnicity versus skin color that goes into that conversation. It's a very complex conversation. I can speak from like my experience. I'm a white Latina, so I've always had a lot of privilege and I have gotten to understand that and navigate this industry in that way. And even as a white Latina, white Chilean born person that grew up down there, I had to come into this industry and sort of be put in boxes like oh but you're not Latina enough oh but you're white oh but you're like all of these boxes that don't really fit anybody because I'm a person and I would never go as far as be like I've been discriminated because that's not my my intention at all my intention is there is a real lack 
of understanding of diversity <laughs> in our industry. And unfortunately for the Latinx community, I think we're making ways. I think what Lisette has done, what we're trying to do of creating these stories that kind of represent that intersectionality, intersectionality of different BIPOC communities. Because in our movie, we have all these different communities, which is the true melting pot of San Francisco. And Latino community as a community, we are a melting pot. We are all colors. We speak different languages. We come from different worlds and we all, the one thing we have in common is colonization. And that is something that we don't speak of enough. We don't speak up about because there's nerves. I mean, I get it. Like the opportunities for Latina women in our industry are tiny. So we're so scared someone's gonna beat us out because they only give the chances to three of us. We're like, I wanna be there. And then you have like a black Latina woman and they're like, oh, you don't look Latina enough because your idea of a Latina woman is white skin and brown eyes. So it's certainly a really interesting subject that I, I love to get the chance to speak on. And from my own perspective, it's interesting to just watch the Latinx community not fight so hard for their stories because there's just this competitiveness that I feel that has affected them. And I, I just really wish for all of these BIPOC communities, all of us to just keep fighting the fight because up till now, and this is why I'm so proud of this movie, our movie represents exactly that. Those doors and those opportunities are not getting created for us. We have to write them, we have to produce them and we have to make them and we have to, if we, I, what I've learned is if I have any platform or any opportunity to hold someone else's hand that doesn't have that, I have to do it. That's what I have learned. Uh, Lisette, I was, I was gonna ask, cause let's talk about more about women as losers. Um, how much do you think people are inspired by I want to say not their parents' failures, but maybe like, you know, faults of their parents. Like if their parents are alcoholic or drug abuse or, or a lot of domestic violence, they grow up and want to be totally different. Do you think that's like the case and that's part of uh, the character that you built in this story? So the character, um, the characters, so what we didn't want to do is we didn't want to judge anybody, right? We didn't want, we wanted to represent a time, represent a period, represent a family, um, represent a situation that if you stick X, Y, and Z people in X, Y, and Z situations, these are going to be the effects most likely, right? It's, it's just, it is, that's just what happens. You don't give people enough money, <laughs> um, no living wages, no education, like these things are going to happen. So it, our film is, yes, this is happening within a family member, but it's happening within a socioeconomic situation. That's the key here. Um, these same people in other situations might be different, um, but the choices that they are, that are allowed to them from Selena's character to the mother's character, to the, to the father's character, to the, to the boss's characters, they are all reacting and surviving within their own choice ecosystem. And that's the point of the film. How, how do you successfully navigate being a writer, producer, and director um, while on a project? I mean, like, do you have to, like, do your these tasks in buckets? And, like, well, today I'm just going to focus on, you know, the directing. I know the writing, you know, probably was all done, you know, beforehand. But how do you, like, navigate the business of the film? We're writing on the future. <laughs> We're writing on set. Um, <laughs> we're definitely on set. No, there's no different, there's no actual different hat that comes off. Unfortunately, I am who I am and um, not very <laughs> God for that. Fortunately, but, fortunately. Um, um, for, you know, it's, it's, it's not, you mentioned Ava, it's not a, um, a, uh, a secret that if you are a woman that looks like me, you are probably doing all of the hats um, out of necessity. Now I took that and I made that into pearls. I said, okay, I'm gonna make my own company. Okay, I'm gonna make my own movie. Um, but it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of work. And it's a lot of things to put on an artist. And then on top of that, when we come out with the films, not only are, is, it, is it a piece of art, it's also a conversation and represent everybody. And it's a lot of things that you take on. Um, but, you know, it's sink or swim. I, I don't have a choice. Again, like Selena, I don't have a choice. So yeah. this is what I'm surviving with. This is what I'm living with. And I, I'm not going to not do it. So. Yes. Producer and Tom, this question is for both of you guys. Like after, due to pandemic, a lot of us have, a lot of the audience has been more committed to streaming platforms, HBO Max, Netflix, yeah. what have you. Um, yeah. How do you think that's changing the, the work going forward? I mean, like if we, we could hopefully get through the pandemic and theaters could open, do you think that the audiences will ever 
get back to, or the producers will ever get back to like leaning on, I have to get it to the big screen. Are, are these platforms gonna be the way to go going, you know, going forward forever? Well, not forever, but. <laughs> um, uh, this was happening before the pandemic and it's a democrat democratization of this process. Mm. Um, I think a lot of people forget that going to a movie is very expensive. If you are on minimum wage, which is a big part of the country, going to one movie is like a hundred dollars and that's sometimes 10% of your weekly salary. Yeah. So we forget that because we're in the Hollywood bubble. So for me, Democrat being on the streaming platform was something that I had seen happen as soon as Netflix showed up because all of a sudden moms, dads, kids could, even if they didn't have the money to go to the big movies or whatever, they had $7.99 a month and all their friends could share. And it's just, you know, it's again, it's a socioeconomic choice. I mean, the, 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 pla the industry has changed. I mean, I've been doing this for nah, 10 years. <laughs> and I, when I first moved to America to follow my dream, um, I booked the first Netflix show, the first ever Netflix show when Netflix was still a V8, like was, was shifting from VHS from like delivering DVDs to, to what it is, the giant that it is today. And it's just so fascinating for me to see what the birth of Netflix did to where we're at today and how as an actor and now a producer, like navigating those waters of like how this industry just keeps you on your feet because it's constantly changing. And COVID, like you said very well, is has only cemented that, but also the conglomerates that are now creating like Warner Brothers buying Disney Plus, Disney Plus buying the Star the Lucasfilm product. Like, it's interesting and a bit scary to me the the current uh, the current environment because we're seeing these massive giants, a la very much Facebook buying WhatsApp and Instagram taking over and you know colonizing that world. It's I I have hope that these things are very cyclical. I think I I agree with Lisette. There's a really great thing about democratization of being able to afford watching a movie and, and being told the story. But at the same time, the feeling you get when you go to a theater is something that I don't think you will ever replicate. And I think it's something that I hope we end up going back to in a manner that is accessible, of course, because at the end of the day, when you strip out all the glam and glitz and BS, we're trying to tell stories. That's what we're really trying to do. And we're trying to get to people to generate some kind of commotion, to have some kind of conversation. So I'm really hoping it gears back to there. Like, you know, the pendulum swings. And I think, I know nothing, by the way, I am no expert on this. I'm just a consumer who likes to watch movies. And I'm hoping the pendulum will swing back a little bit, but who the F knows? thing about that and streaming with regards to inclusion however I don't think it's a secret that the more we've gone to streaming the more inclusion has become a conversation because variety yeah algorithms 100% algorithms don't lie and if your algorithm is telling you people are liking this type of content these type number of one show right now in the world is Korean Korean made Korean language and they're like oh for the longest time buyers wouldn't buy foreign movies because like we don't understand that language and like look at these guys like with it's so exciting to have something like that really break the system go guess what good content is good content yeah doesn't well, need to be all white <laughs> well women as losers is, is great content i think it's gonna start a lot of conversations and, <laughs> and um and i can't wait to till the world gets to see it and um Thank, thank you guys for your time. It's been a, a very thank you Jamal, for the conversation. conversation. Uh, we could talk forever. We just I wanted to talk. talk so much. I probably ranted too much already, no, but no, it's, it's great. It's, it's thank you so much. Have learned on the call because I, you know, it's hard to answer these questions, and we don't, like we said, we don't have the answers. We are also I'm no expert. <laughs> we're learning in this process as well. What we will say is, you know, we're here, and let's let's be hopeful uh, going forward. Congratulations on your work. Thank you for your time. Thank Can't you, wait to Jamal. See everything else you guys have coming on in the future. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Bye. Go to Chile. Go to Chile. <laughs> <laughs>